what's up guys Clint or Cali WX this will be a full walk around slash review of my interior setup of the Sparco Evo seats with the Sparco four point harnesses and the Sparco harness bar that I have so let's get right into it and we'll start out in the back of the car all right so in the back we have the Sparco harness bar that I bought off eBay for $200 it's a long story. Sparco does not make these anymore, so the only place you're going to find them is eBay or Craigslist or used from other people. So I painted it myself with about four coats of white primer, five to six coats of lime green, and then two coats of a gloss clear coat. And this is how it turned out. So it bolts in right here. Unfortunately, you can't use the seatbelt covers unless you want to cut it. I did not want to do that, so I just left mine off. As you can see, it bolts into the factory seatbelt with the seatbelt, or, and the seatbelt can still work. It goes also to the bottom of the B pillar down there and mounts all the way across, like so. For the harnesses, I rolled them up and then zip tied them because they are really long and just hang, which is extremely annoying for the passengers in the back. But I know some of you have asked specifically WRX Nate about what it's like to sit back here. I am sitting, and as you can see, it's maybe two feet in front of my chest. Um, your head will probably hit it, most likely, if we got into a serious accident. So it is not extremely safe to sit back here, but it is doable for around town. I probably won't put people in the back, or I probably will not put people in the back when I do canyon runs, stuff like that. Um, one thing you do have to note is that the only way the back seats will go down is if you take out the headrest or else the headrest will hit here. So that's why I have this one undone already, as you can see, but I still have this one on because just in case I do need a passenger. Now that's about it for the back. As you can see, I put the seat belts behind the seats and a four Paul sticker just because I have that laying around. I took the seat belts and put them behind because I do not want the annoying seat belt chime. There is a trick where you do it 30 times in 20 seconds or something like that, or like 20 times in 30 seconds to get the seatbelt trying to go away. But I thought this was just the easiest fix. So I did that for both sides and I specifically left them in. So in case I do need to use the stock seatbelt, it's right there. But further behind, that's about it. So we're gonna go ahead and move up to the passenger side seat. So see you in a bit. So we're gonna start out with the harnesses on this side. As you can see, there are padding or pads here because the girlfriend wanted them, so she gets what she wants. The belts themselves are three inch in the shoulder and two inch for the lap belt. It's a four point lock style with a cam lock. So to undo it, what you gotta do is, I'm just gonna put this one in, which is hard with one hand, like so. It's locked in. To undo it, you just flip it and it comes right out. So very easy to adjust. There's one cable on this side that you pull or loosen, one on this side, and then these two to tighten. But overall, really good quality, easy to install. Um, one thing you do have to note is that the little O-bolt, don't know if you guys can see it, which is right here. It's bigger than the stock factory one, so you're gonna have to re-tap a hole or find a smaller O-bolt to fit actually in there. So that's just something you have to look out for. But that's about it for the harnesses. They really hold you in place. I really like them. They don't actually take that long to install. I mean, sorry, to put on. It took me, I want to say 13 seconds or less to do it as my fastest time. So what I just do is let the car warm up a little, plug them in, and we're good to go. But let's move on to the seats. This is the Sparco Evo with Grip Tech technology, whatever you want to call it. So there's the little grip right here for the shoulders and for your butt. I think it works well. It's very snug, but there is different sizes. There's the Evo 2, which is a little taller and also much bigger in here for your waist. And then I believe there's an Evo 3, which means it's probably even taller and even bigger here. I'm 5'10", waist size 32, 33, 170-ish pounds and these fit me perfectly. There's a little wiggle room, like a little, but not super much. I know some people 
complain about how snug they are, but personally, it doesn't bother me for daily driving at all. Um, so, the seats themselves are on planted base technologies, which is the bottom bracket, Sparco side mounts, and then a Sparco slider, which is right here, and then mounted to the Sparco Evo seat. They do sit a little lower than stock, but not a whole lot. I'm sure if I got rid of the slider bar, I could sit it much lower. As you can see, there's still one little space. It could go down in the front and the back, but the reason I can't do that is because then it'll be sitting right on top of the slider bar, and that won't work, basically. So, yeah. I also used a 3.3 ohm resistor to get rid of the airbag light, as well as using the stock airbag bladder from the passenger seat so that when someone sits in this it registers that the airbags need to be turned off for the passenger. There is no way I would run this seat without airbags for my passenger as that is highly unsafe and I do not recommend it. So definitely do that. Um, like, as, or like you guys can see they are non-adjustable seats so they're fixed back. The ride comfort is very comfortable. The, um, the padding in here is very nice. You can get extra seat, or a, 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 sorry, you can get another cushion that is raised up here. So in case you're shorter and you need your shoulders to go up or something like that. And there's also lower back support pads that you can get as well. What else, what else? Um, I drove to Santa Cruz in these seats and back. And overall I was extremely comfy. I was not uncomfortable at all. I think I, my posture is even better in these seats and my back feels better driving around in these than actually the stock seats because in the stock ones I think I sat a little too far back. Now one thing to notice is I have this seat and my seat in front of the B pillar because if you slide this back as you can see it sticks out past the B pillar. So what you're going to do is you're going to start pushing this cushion in and kinking the fabric. I do not want that so like I like I said before, I have it in front of the B-puller to avoid that issue. Now, let's go ahead and move to the driver's side as I have some things to talk about over there. Okay, really overexposed. Hang on, guys. Now, as you may or may not have just seen, it is a little hard to get in with this size wheel because this stock wheel is the size of a pizza dish and it's insanely big. So. I definitely recommend a D-shaped wheel or a quick release wheel to make getting in and out of these seats a little easier. Now, also one thing to note is if you're wearing a puffier jacket, say, getting the lap belt on will be harder because it's going to be tighter. Personally, I never really liked wearing zip-up jackets when I drove around, but definitely in this seat because it hugs you so much right here at the shoulders and down at the waist it's going to be very uncomfortable to wear a zip-up jacket if you leave it unzipped. Um, if I had a zip-up in the car, I would give you an example, because also with the shoulder harnesses, it, it's no bueno. It doesn't work out very well. Hooded, hooded jackets are fine, stuff like that. Um, I've noticed driving around jeans are the most uncomfiest things to wear, just because if you start moving around in your seat a lot, it just gets uncomfortable in that lower area, as to say. But let's go over the pros and cons. I had to write them down because there's, I, I knew I would forget. So one of the cons is it's hard to get in and out, mainly on the driver's side, the passenger side, it's easy to get in and out. The only reason it's hard to get in and out, like I said, is the steering wheel. That's an easy fix, get a D-shaped wheel or a quick release, but that's mainly it. Um, the harness bar in the back seat limits people from sitting back there. Uh, so basically, my back seats are only meant for really short drives at most, so unless I have my passengers wear helmets, which would be a little weird, but still, you gotta do what you gotta do, right? Like I said about clothing, it can get uncomfy with the certain clothes that you wear. Um, just note, the more clothes you're wearing, and the har uh, you might wanna adjust your harnesses for that. Right now I have the harnesses adjusted, so I'm not wearing a jacket. Well, the shoulders, sorry, are really easy to adjust. It's the lap one, so if you're wearing a puffier jacket, thicker pants or something like that, it's gonna be harder to actually click it in. Now, also, if you're wearing a belt, sometimes that can get a little annoying with the harness across your lap, but that's all personal preference. Most of these cons I'm finding are personal preferences, like the clothing. That's where my OCD kicks in. Um, 
like I said, it gets uncomfy if you move around a lot. Uh, it restricts your movements. So let me go ahead and buckle in for you guys. I'm gonna leave my door open. I'm gonna buckle all the way in. I'm gonna tighten. I can't, I can't reach my door as hard as I can try. So let me show you guys, flip the camera around. Here I'm sitting. I can't even, I can touch this. I can't even, oh, I got my door handle, but I can't pull the door handle towards me. I can't reach my glove box and I can't reach, or I can barely, I can't really open that. So definitely restricts your movements when you are wearing the harnesses. Getting stuff in the back seat is no longer an option. Yeah, so, I mean, you can still reach your wheel just fine, but you can't. The thing, so definitely close your door before you actually harness up because, like me right now, I can't do it and it'll be a pain to unlock and do everything again. And the last con is passengers complain more. The girlfriend, not so much. Um, just other people have complained that aren't car people. They're like, why do you have these? Can I just wear a regular seatbelt? Oh my God, these are so annoying. It's so uncomfy, stuff like that. But damn, dude. Poor girl, don't ride in my car. Sorry. Um, now let's go ahead and talk about the pros, shall we? One, you are very planted. You're not going to go anywhere in these seats. The only difference that I found between these seats and, say, like the brides that Declan's dad has in the Evo is that this... I need to unbuckle. This part right here, as you guys can see, is kind of at a curve. Like it curves down like so. His go all the way straight. So that means your legs don't have as much room to go side to side like mine do. I can easily reach the dead pedal and be comfy. I can move my legs around, no problem. If it went out a little more, say like right here, my leg couldn't fully extend if I wanted it to or not. Um, the shoulder support in these seats are great. My girlfriend, who's a little bit shorter, actually her shoulders are kind of underneath, so she doesn't get the full support of the shoulder harness or the shoulder pads. Um, like I said, my posture is much better in these seats. The ISO is way too high, sorry. The seating position is great. Um, I have the slider if I need to move it. I don't find my back uncomfortable because it's too upright or too forward or too back. It's just perfect. I could find myself driving and never getting tired of these seats. The only thing I probably get tired of is if I move around too much and I get my clothes get too uncomfortable. But that's mainly it, these seats keep you in place like no other, huge improvement over stock along with the harnesses. I have yet to do a really, really hard canyon drive. I've done a little, but it wasn't super spirited. You can focus on the road more instead of your body. Meaning like when I know, or when I did canyon drives, I'd have one leg up against the shifter bezel and the other against the door holding my weight in. And now I can just focus on driving. I don't have to worry about how my body's moving. And if you understand what I mean, it's kind of hard to explain. Their, these seats are lighter than stock, so weight reduction because race car. Better back support, like I said. I find them more comfy. The girlfriend finds them really comfy, so that's all that matters, right? The thigh support is great. Much better than the stock boat seats. Shoulder support is great. The harnesses hold you in place, and they're comfy. So yeah, that's about it. And then I guess I can add into the cons is getting in and out. It's hard with the wheel because of my thick thunder thighs. But yeah, overall guys, I mean, these seats are amazing. I can't, I think they're one of my favorite modifications I've done to the car besides the wheels. The wheels will always be in the number one because of the way they look, the color and stuff like that. And I definitely think seats and harnesses bring me more engaged with my car. It's just great. It took a little bit of time to get used to because you sit or I feel like I sit a little more left of the wheel. My chest doesn't line fully up with the center of the wheel. But that could just be me, I don't know. I do plan, hopefully, to get either a D-shaped wheel or a quick, quick release wheel just to help getting in and out easier. Or I have to lose some weight in my thighs, which I don't know is possible because I love to eat. That just got real awkward real fast. But if you guys have any more questions, I know this was really fast. I had so many thoughts going up here. I probably left something out. Go ahead and ask it down in the questions down below. I will... Um, answer them to the best of my ability. I know someone's going to ask me about price and I'm going to say I got an amazing deal on the harnesses, the seats, 
the base, the side mounts, the slider bar, and the brackets. I got it all for $2,500. I, I don't know how much it would be if I didn't. Plane. Okay, I got them for $2,500. I don't know how much it, I think it would have been maybe closer to three three or three hundred three thousand dollars without the deal um, don't quote me on that you'll have to look it up but oh yeah that's also in, um, with the harness bar so harness bar seats um, harnesses all the stuff you need to mount the seat on and all the hardware but no labor included in that because Adam did this for free so I got a super amazing deal I couldn't pass it up and stay tuned for the next video guys because these suckers are in the gauges are finally in, but I've noticed when I film them, they flash just because of the way the camera picks them up. So I'm going to have to figure a way where they don't flash. But anyways, guys, until next time, this has been a quick video, quick review. I know I probably left some stuff out. If I did, comment down below and I will answer all your questions. Like, subscribe. Peace out.